Hi there, I am Adam Kibas. This is another episode of my podcast. We are still in the pandemic. I am still in Ordu. Nothing has changed in in Turkey. I hope that you all are doing fine. I mean, we will continue today where we stopped the last day, where we stopped yesterday. And this is uh, this difficult topic with desire. I mean, it is indeed one of these things which I, not only I think which is pretty much evident that everyone talks about, especially desire always comes with love, false love, true love. And uh, we have, will have uh, to inevitably uh, make some statements and comments about love as well. So where we see love, what is love, what we assume is love and so on. But this is all in the making. This is all in the future. Like I said, this is an, uh, this is, uh, if you want some sort of a, a philosophical journey, a thought process where we try to figure out uh, what um, could things mean so we, if we, we don't have uh, I, I did not have prepared have prepared uh, uh, an exact knowledge I don't know what uh, well, which results we will come to and I always want to, uh, that we start from a common ground this is the reason why I use for example Google definitions because everyone can Google it everyone nowadays or at least most of the people nowadays have a, a smartphone and in a way uh, can have access or um, some sort of, I know some may not have uh, but in a way these Google definitions this, they are somehow common mis- uh, commonly known and of course there is indeed a, if you want uh, a difference between an English native speaker and and a German German native speaker in that sense that I will learn those exact definitions definitions whereas an English native speaker w- um, grows up with w- words like desire we want craving it's not quite clear when to use them I mean uh, the English language has indeed a lot of synonyms it is very difficult for for, um, for for a German native speaker to learn English because it is firstly a very visual language and secondly all those synonyms uh, because it is visual they are used in a special way uh, sorry about that I I always have to intermittently interrupt the recordings because we are in Turkey and in Turkey there is some weird habit that you always announce the death of someone via speaker so this is the reason despite the fact that it is 8 a.m. in the morning and I don't think that in the pandemic in the pandemic that it is uh, very smart to, to announce uh, the deaths of people via speaker because uh, well this will further uh, um, devastate the population and will eventually lead to some panic panics but however this is what uh, uh, um, habit in Turkey, so I'm sorry about this. I I always have to interrupt it because here in uh, in uh, Turkey, those announcements are made. I mean, I I always try to record it early, but yet well, you can't choose it. I mean, I always uh, normally I was I was recording it later, but uh, no matter what you do, you, you somehow always bump into these announcements, despite uh, because we are in the pandemic. However, uh, we want to talk about desire. This uh, was our topic. This is very important. And we talked yesterday about, uh, if you want, the social implications of desire. What has changed? I mean, we, I tried to portray it. Firstly, I think I want to repeat this again. This, that over-sexualization was not made via internet, was not made via, via, Porn industry over sexualization. Over sexualization was present before that. I mean, over sexualization was as well as uh, dates 
back uh, I think he, he, uh, uh, even in the antiquity where you have some uh, some books some some uh, charts and so on so so uh, so in the antiquity Equity, you see a lot of naked men, a lot of naked uh, uh, people in uh, portrait as a bust and so on. So in the un antiquity, in Greek antiquity, in Roman antiquity, there was of course the display. This was rather we talked about it a homo for homo erotic. So the the young man, uh, young male. Uh, Bodies were displayed. This was actually, if you want, the first time where you can say where man or male uh, man um, were in a way in the center of all attention. The male body, muscular, you, youthful, and so on. So this is very important that we notice it, and I wanted to repeat this again. So over sexualization did not start with the internet. It was uh, we know this from the end equity and so on but yet what has changed I mean of course this is what I try to explain is that as a man or as a man how you perceive perceive things I mean still um, uh, there are some 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 things as a man still there are genders you you have to be or genders you have to follow things that people still expect what man should do what man should be and so on and the same is for women and over sexualization this is the second important thing is not a one-way road is it it has some sort of an invisible side and this is that the, the firstly uh, that men are affected by this as well so women of course in in recent Time the female body, the woman is in the center of all attention, is the, the object of over sexualization. But this has as well as effect to men as well, because women are being considered as Aphrodites, as women who are very uh, sexually experienced, uh, have, have, if you want, uh, mm, mm, some, some, uh, some demands, competition. This is again what I uh, try to out uh, uh, portray, and this is that, of course, things have changed, changed compared to the baby boomer back in the days. As a baby boomer, you could partially um, assume that the girl you are with was a virgin, that she did not have much sex, sexual experiences, and so nowadays this is not the case. As a man, um, you will assume or will have to assume that a, that a woman ha had more partners so this is again your manliness is questioned you are not the first one you have to compete with other men and so on and this of course increases your your uncomfortability uh, increases your fear that you feel an uncomfortable manliness again is is uh, is uh, big in the topic However, this was what we are talking about. Today we will some sort of clear some uh, some definitions. I know that these are very simple definitions, especially if you are an English native speaker. Then you probably use these words without further thinking about it. Yet, I mean, uh, I'm I'm a German native speaker, and for us, especially through learning the language, you of course. Uh, had to learn those definitions, even those simple ones, when to use, when and so on. I mean, when we talk about desire, of course, there are a lot of uh, synonyms. Synonyms, they, uh, they are always mostly general. I mean, I have uh, written down some synonyms from Google, Google uh, Dictionary. This is everyone can Google this and... Uh, and, and and see it and the first word of verb is, verb if you want is want want is is a desire to possess or do something and i and i outlined to possess i mean this is what we talked about hate hate uh, sometimes um, that uh, that an object that you have a special relationship to an object it belongs to your possession you want something if you want something this object uh, has to have a meaning for you this would be simple object 
relationships if you want so 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 uh, an object mm, uh, and a possession is in that extent has uh, included and entails the a special relationship of the object a value so we talked about someone who associates himself with the car this is very common among men so so if you have a have a um, let's say a, a very uh, fast car a supercar hypercar whatever you have this is some sort of a statement st statement about your manliness and so on and other things as well as is 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 wealth and so on and this all has to do with the gender so we always have to consider a want and this is what we will talk about a little bit later is that we desire want we always have to consider is at the back drop at this society at your gender where you belong to i mean we talked about sex in the city we talked about miranda the character of miranda which some sort of epi to my sis, a uh, fem uh, woman or female emancipation in the 21st century, which I said that it some sort of indicates a wrong development as well, as well because femininity, uh, femininity is sacrificed for the sake to adopt to a male society. However, and this uh, 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 and and we have to see. Uh, um, and emphasize again that we here mm, cannot talk about object. This is what we talk about love, uh, love especially. So love is something you cannot have love for an object because love always demands a response. Love always uh, gives you an, uh, a reply. However, I mean, we will center here. Want is rather you would s use it for objects. I mean, I want, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, cup of water i want something and so on so and crave is crave would be the second word which i i uh, wrote down from google um, uh, dictionary this is and the definition for crave is feel of a powerful desire for something again we have here the object again we have here something an object has meaning for you um, and I mean, again, <clears throat> again, there are indeed a lot of definitions and I only chose those want and crave in order to emphasize again that desire, desire is, is, uh, is, uh, connected uh, to an object. Uh, and I have a definition of desire as well. Desire is, is according to Google, a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wish to happen desire you crave something you you want be you want to, to be connected to something you have a desire you 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 wish uh, something we will talk about desire uh, in in terms of in in physical terms here of course in sexuality i mean what i desire which type of 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 person i desire again we will not um i th th think the lgbtq plus community actually there are enough literature which some sort of talk about the the gender the homosexuality or or why you crave or why you want the same sex there is enough uh, literature um, again i mean i'm i'm a heterosexual man i'm a straight man so 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 this is of course from a perspective of a straight man so we will some sort of analyze the desire to women i mean but again not why we desire women or why for example a man uh, loves to be a war with a woman but the goal of our inquiry is that we some sort of figure out this special type of woman what we try some sort of try to figure out with the analysis of sex in the city i mean a special type of uh, woman the conditions which might hamper or hinder our 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 judgments or where, where we some sort of choose uh, if you want uh, an outcome which we are not satisfied with yet uh, we can some sort of 
ease our fear and so on. I mean, this, that's why it was very important that we emphasized it. This so.